Well, hey guys, welcome back to the hillside. This is the front porch edition. Um, what I want to talk about today is fall gardening. Um, you know, there's plenty of things out there that talks about what you can plant or, you know, just giving you some examples and they always do the same crops like the cold hardy crops, your brassicas, etc. But I just want to show you a little bit of a practical application of that method. So as you can see, these are some containers on my front porch. Uh, my garden is pretty much full of peppers and tomatoes and they're winding down. But what I've done here, starting from back here, this is just some Belgian endive. This is some leaf lettuce right here. Scanning over here. This is a mixed planter. It has some collard greens, a couple turnips. I think there's a random carrot seed that popped up from the compost and some leaf lettuce. Now what I've done here is, uh, I guess you might call it multi-sowing or you know, interplanting, but right here, there's at least four or five little collard seedlings there. Because while this is on the front porch, A, it's accessible, so I'm going to see it every day as I pass uh, you know, in and out of the house. So uh, my plan here is to make sure I harvest these as baby greens, and if you're going to do so, you, can, uh, you actually want to keep them a little bit closer, which will cause the plants to be... Uh, not getting out of control because if you've ever grown collard greens out in the garden or kale or anything like that these guys can get become huge plants so i don't want that i don't want giant plants up here and uh two things happen in the fall the temperatures are cooling off and well the amount of sunlight you're getting is uh getting a little bit shorter every single day so you don't need to worry about all the excessive vigorous growth that you'll get early in the spring uh, when you plant something such as a, a brassica or maybe even a, a lettuce or you know something like that so that being said, um, I think this is a great method for anyone who has an apartment or just uh, doesn't have the energy or the strength to go out and have an actual garden outside about the possibilities of what you're able to do with just a little bit of a, you know, you know, a little bit of space. Uh, this is full of just my, uh, my compost here. These plants are healthy, doing great. And I just want to show you something quick while we're here on the front porch. Uh, these are some Japanese maples. Okay, and shadows in the way. There we go. More Japanese maple there, and there's three little guys in here. Hard to see in the shadow here. Sorry, guys. But, um, yeah, uh, just a side note on that. I did find these seeds on the street, walking down. Decided to put them into a pot. Uh, seeds grew, and I'm just going to try to raise them up. Maybe I'll put them in the yard one day, give them away to a friend or a family or something like that, and uh, go on. But there you go. Just uh, zooming over here, show you a little something different. I did an, an episode a little bit ago about planting asparagus from seed uh, towards the end of summer. And my uh, strategy, and there's a helicopter flying by, two helicopters, nice. Um, the asparagus you see right here are doing healthy. They're coming up, doing just fine. And my opinion on this is I like to plant them towards the middle of summer, towards the end. And that's really loud. Make those guys pass. Was actually four helicopters five wow five helicopters flying by right in the middle of me trying to talk about asparagus you never know what you're gonna have to deal with when you're making a live video right anyways back to what I was trying to say uh, the uh, the asparagus here are coming up just fine I use the pre uh, pelletized seeds these are the Mary Washington asparagus I've had almost about 100% germination. There's one spot right about there that I'd have to go back and check, but there might have been two or three seeds that didn't sprout out of the whole bunch. And asparagus, these guys are uh, pretty tender plants. So what I like to do is start them towards this end of summer, into the fall, get them established in a pot like this, because, you know, you don't harvest your asparagus for a couple of years anyways, or start, you know, taking a harvest from it. So the first year, I like to keep them like this. I'll overwinter them inside the greenhouse, or you can even leave these outdoors. I mean, it's not going to kill them. They're very, very hardy plants. Just They'd actually be worse off if it gets waterlogged or stays too wet, quite honestly, my opinion. But anyways, so I'll let these guys grow up, and then in the spring, I'll divide them up into their own plants, uh, and into their own plants, into their own p pots, or into uh, different sections of the garden to kind of give them a head start. But this way, you're able to start many plants and get off to a great start because these, uh, believe it or not, buying asparagus, uh, you know, at the big box store or something like that, you might get two or three crowns that are about two or three years old, and you're gonna pay a lot of money for it. Or else, I probably have 25, maybe closer to 20, 20 to 25, doesn't matter. Uh, seedlings in here for about what a two dollars and ninety nine cent package 
so yeah, uh, using that math, and that's probably worth like thirty, forty dollars worth of actual plants here in a couple of years. And you get to watch them grow. You can take care of them, make sure they have the best possible conditions, and go from there. Um, yeah, and just uh, I guess I'll go ahead and wrap it up there, guys. But let me just show you a couple more of my flowers here. There's a hydrangea I got on clearance. Some uh, tomatoes I just picked from the garden. As you see, they're kind of small and falling down there. Uh, yeah, they're not so hot. The plants are kind of dying off. So this is towards the end of the season. You know, you start wrapping up the tomato harvest and the pepper harvest, which this little guy here is holding on. I do have a couple peppers that are ripening on it. So I really can't complain. This plant has been super productive and it's just, like I said, just in a little, little shallow container. And over here are some, uh, some radishes I kind of threw in. They're doing all right. And anyways, uh, I'll wrap it up here, guys. I said that before, I know. But um, just take advantage of the fall weather to start some stuff. Do it on your front porch. You don't have to go plowing up the garden and doing all these things. Uh, make it as easy as possible on yourself. And if you're going to grow it for the kitchen, like I plan on eating these greens fresh, uh, the pepper here is fresh, you know, use it for cooking, whatever. Ultimate kitchen gardening on your front porch. Uh, well, how could it get better than that? Free, fresh, and right at your front doorstep. So this is Dave, the uh, Hillside Gardener, coming to you from the front porch. And uh, we'll see you next time. Hope this gives you some ideas what you're able to do in a small, limited space with just some containers. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.